Hey guys, welcome back. Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. I got a really special uh, gun to show you here today. This is not one that we uh, get to play with all the time, and uh, they're not very commonly encountered uh, anymore. Uh, but this is a really interesting piece of Kel-Tec history, I guess you could call it. Uh, this goes back to the days before Kel-Tec. Uh, this is a Grendel P30. And there are some of the lines of this pistol that probably look familiar. Well, um, you yeah. know, it's definitely the predecessor of the PMR-30. Uh, you guys are probably familiar with that kel -Tec pistol. Definitely a refined and uh, arguably very much improved version of the original Grendel P30. And George Kelgren designed this uh, pistol back in 1990, and Grendel produced them from around 1990 to 1994. Uh, these were avail available in a couple of different barrel lengths. Uh, this is the shortest barrel available, which I believe is a five inch barrel. And then the longer barrel was like either a seven or eight inch barrel, if I recall. Uh, they did issue this also in a carbine version called the P31 uh, that was a pretty interesting setup too. So just like the PMR30, this is a 22 Magnum and uses a 30 round magazine. The parts and magazines for this gun are absolutely not available. Um, I don't know how well this gun's going to work. It is old. Um, we've done our best to respring it and get it back up to par uh, as best we can. We're going to try to shoot it just to demonstrate it for you, but I'm not going to put a lot of rounds through this gun because the parts are very difficult to get. Uh, we wanted to kind of talk about it because I, I think that George Kelgren honestly just doesn't get enough respect for what he's done for the gun industry and all of the great gun designs that have come out of his mind. I mean, you look at Samuel Colt, right? And like, okay, if Samuel Colt is to Henry Ford, right? What, like what Samuel Colt did for the gun world is the same thing that Henry Ford did for the car world, right? Well, one could argue George Kelgren most certainly must, must be Nikola Tesla in, in the gun world, right? A visionary, like really forward thinking. And every time I've ever talked to George at trade shows and stuff, He's always got this like reserved manner about him. He don't talk a lot. He don't say a lot, but you, you can tell like he's always, he's always in here and he's always thinking and, and he's just constantly engineering and you can tell he's always firing on all cylinders and uh, he's just such an interesting dude, you know? And you look at all of the gun designs that kel -Tec has come out with. Now, some people would argue, okay, maybe some of the kel -Tecs have teething issues when they're new. All right, that's fair, okay? They always work them out though. They always work out the kinks and they always come up with some great designs and also for a really good price too. Um, so I just think this, this video is kind of an homage to George Kelgren. And uh, you know, this is one of his earliest incantations. Uh, you know, the design of this pistol is really unique. Uh, it's actually got a threaded bushing that goes into the end of the, uh, of the slide assembly with a huge mainspring uh, that goes over the barrel, not unlike a Makarov PM or uh, something like a Star or Astra pistol uh, that uses that similar type of arrangement. So it's, it's got a very Astra-like look to the top. Uh, this is a very early polymer frame pistol. Uh, when you look at, I mean, I guess Glocks came out around 1980, right? But uh, this one didn't come around until 1990, but this definitely represents an early polymer frame pistol. In fact, this particular polymer material, Chad's not gonna like this because this is his gun. If I squeeze this grip a little bit, flexes. So it's an early type of polymer, not nearly as strong as some of the uh, newer polymers that we have now. Uh, and I've noticed too on original P80 Glocks, okay, the original early pebble grip Glocks, if you take a Glock and you squeeze it, it flexes. So there have been, you know, the argument would be, oh, polymer frame guns suck or whatever and the older ones suck. It's not true. But to say that they haven't made rolling changes to polymer technology and made, have better polymers available now than what were available 30, 40 years ago, I think it's safe to say that the newer polymers certainly are better. They're certainly more rigid. I mean, I can't take a PMR-30 and squeeze it like that and get it to flex. I'm not gonna do it too much, but we are going to attempt to shoot this. I can't comment as to how well it's gonna work, but let's go ahead and give it a try. I've got 30 rounds of CCI A22, 22 Magnum. This is a 22 Magnum. The magazines are proprietary to this pistol. They are not interchangeable with the PMR30, but you can kind of see where the PMR30 gets its heritage in terms of the mag design. Uh, the rounds do stagger into the magazine in a very similar fashion as the uh, PMR30. But uh, anyway, let's give it a try. Please work. <laughs> 
All right, I just want to showcase this. It's just a really interesting gun. I don't know where it's hitting. I don't know how accurate it is. I don't know if it's going to work. All right, we're going to give it a try. You've got a manual safety that is located on the, uh, you know, uh, available from both sides of the pistol, so ambidextrous safety. And the safety design you see does hold over to some of the later kel designs. Very, very similar to some of the modern kel you're going to see. Okay, Grindel P30. Will it blow up in my hand? I don't know. Everyone's back behind me. All right, let's give it a try. 30 rounds of 22 Magnum. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna to try to take out a few of the sodas. Those two weird flyers that pushed over there, low and to the left, they weren't me. No idea what, <laughs> what caused that, but man, what a cool pistol. I'm shooting a P30. This is awesome. I'm gonna to try to take out a soda pop. Look at that. Yeah. Not bad. Okay, we got a stoppage here. It was only on the last round out of the magazine. It just didn't uh, quite go all the way into battery there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the round in the chamber. I don't know if it's a magazine disconnect safety. Look, let's try it. We'll see if it'll fire without the magazine in it. The target right in front of me here. Okay. And I believe there is no last, yeah, there is no last uh, round bolt hold open. Okay, uh, look, uh, we're gonna cut and I'll just fill this magazine back up and we'll go ahead and try one more magazine out of it just for uh, academic purposes. Wow, that worked uh, quite well. Really cool, P30. All right, I'm gonna load up another mag. All right, we got another mag loaded up here for the P30. Uh, mags load relatively easily, uh, not a whole lot of effort required. Uh, don't lose your mag because these things are impossible to get. We've only got one magazine. Uh, I failed to mention earlier, this is just a blowback design, uh, just like the uh, PMR-30 is, and it's also worthy footnote to mention that the P-30 used a fluted barrel. The early PMR-30s used a fluted barrel, but then kel wound up doing a lot more work with them and ended up finding out that the fluting was actually giving problems, and they went to a non-fluted chamber uh, on the PMR-30. So if you have a PMR-30 and you look in there and there's flutes inside the chamber, uh, you probably need to send that one back and get a replacement barrel for it. They did wind up finding out uh, that the fluting wasn't necessary in the PMR-30 design. But early PMR-30s and the P-30 have a fluted chamber. That's completely normal. Uh, that's to aid in extraction. Okay. Rim fires are dirty. So I guess they figured, or George figured, that, you know, the fluted chamber would aid with the extraction. Okay. And also probably make a, a better seal, too, since it is a blowback and it's a relatively hot cartridge. Uh, the fluted chamber will help. Uh, the gun establish a proper pressure and then help avoid uh, you know that cartridge from sticking in the chamber I think was the overall idea. All right, I'm gonna try one more magazine. We're not gonna shoot this a ton, but one more mag. Running uh, pretty good. All right, <laughs> P30. Wow, cool stuff. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to hit something here. Good stuff. Real basic sights on this gun. Dang, come on, man. Wow. 
Wow. Kind of all over the place <laughs> down at longer distances, but uh, I mean, up close, shooting some nice tight little groups with it, not too bad. Ooh, okay, oh, yep, it didn't pick up the last round out of the magazine. All right, it should be the last round. I mean, look, <laughs> that last group right there, not bad. That was like five or six shots into, you know, pretty tight little cluster. So I could certainly see where, you know, Keltec and, you know, George and the crew uh, saw the benefit of re-releasing or modernizing the P30 design because, uh, this one shows some pretty inherent accuracy potential. Um, not bad. I mean, especially for an old school barrel. I mean, this gun at this point is uh, definitely getting, you know, over 30 years old, but holding up really great. And uh, I think what we'll probably wind up doing since this model uh, works so well for us, you know, it's not shooting bad. Maybe in the future video, we'll do a little uh, PMR 30 versus P, uh, P30 video just for uh, nostalgia's sake. So guys, we hope you enjoyed this quick presentation on the P30. Definitely not a gun you see every day, especially the carbines. They're not common at all. We will try to locate a carbine to do a video on at some point, uh, but really cool stuff. Um, guys, have a great day. We really appreciate you watching today. We hope you enjoyed it uh, as much as we did. Uh, I, I love these old school guns. It's so cool, you know, and big shout out to George Kelgren. Definitely a genius and uh, an innovator in the firearms world. And uh, it's always cool to see some of his early handiwork uh, in action. So yeah, uh, definitely want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters, those of you who purchase man cans. We got some great merchandise boxes for sale. I say merch, it's really great gear that we use all the time. Uh, we put together medical gear and stuff you take out of the range. So all those boxes are super, super vetted stuff that we use on a regular basis. Uh, pick up a man can if you want to support us. Also, go over to Ballistic Inc., pick yourself up a snazzy t-shirt. All of those ways are direct ways that you can support us if you love the content and you wish to financially support us directly. So have a great day. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you next time.